Hi. The third topic of module two is process capability. After measuring a process and drawing value stream map, it is important for us to understand how capable the process is. There are different types of charts available for statistical process control. We need to do this first so that we understand the process and calculate process capability index. The most fundamental chart in statistical process control is X bar and R chart. X bar chart concerns the central tendency of a process where R chart represents dispersion of the process. Both charts should be in control to conclude that a process is under control. Here are the formula to calculate X bar chart. Usually, population standard deviation is unknown, and at that time, the central line X double bar is the mean of the same means. Upper control limit for that is A2 times R bar, where R bar is the average range of the samples. X double bar and R bar is quite straightforward to find out. A2 is the value given in table S6.1, which is available in the next slide. R chart can be similarly calculated. The upper control limit is D4 times R bar, lower control limit is D3 times R bar, and R bar uh, which is the mean of ranges, serves as the center line. Here's the control chart where we find A2 value and D4 and D3 values. It is important for us to refer to the right sample size. Sample size does not mean how many data points you have. It indicates the number of processes that you are examining. Say in a manufacturing setting, you are making a car out of three automatic lines. The sample size is three. Similarly, if you have four different service lines, the same size is the sample size is four. Then read the number that corresponds to the right column. Then you will be able to find the values for A2, D4, and D3 and plug them into the formula to find out upper control limit and lower control limit. Here's how to um, interpret the statistical process control chart. A special cause exists if four out of five consecutive points fall in zone B or beyond. The figure below shows an example of this test. This test is applied for zone B above the average than for zone B below the average. There are other laws such as um, a point is out of the boundary, then it is out of control. And you see um, two out of three points are remaining in zone A, then it's a symptom that the process is not really capable or goes out of the, uh, the, um, the uh, control. Rule four, eight or more consecutive points on one side of the center line is right there. It's supposed to oscillate but it's been, uh, staying on the other side like this, then it's problematic. And rule five, a trend is six or more consecutive points increasing or decreasing like this, then it's also a sign of, of a problem. Then let's go through uh, this statistical process control chart again together. Rowan Bank aims at serving customers in five minutes after entering the bank industry. Five steps usually serve students and uh, the business process improvement students decided to measure the process. Visualize the process using statistical process control chart and calculate its process capabilities. So let's uh, uh, look at the data. We see there are four step, uh, five steps and they are working from 9 o'clock till 5 p.m. And here is the average uh, the time, wait time for uh, a customer. And uh, they saw step one or two or three or four or five. And this data was collected 
for the entire day. Then we have to now um, work on X bar chart and R chart. Let, to work with X bar and R chart, we need to find the X bars, which is the average of this uh, time at 9, and that's 4.98. The range is maximum minus minimum, so maximum is 6.1, minimum is 4.5, then you have 1.6, the difference. And then uh, in the same way, you are going to calculate the means of this uh, um, average time at 10 a.m. that's 4.84 and range is 1.4. Uh, similarly, you are going to go through all the things, then you fill out this uh, table and you calculate the average of this sample means, then you get 5.14 and the uh, range, uh, the average of that is 2.43, that's R bar. So X double bar and R bar uh, are calculated here. Then you are ready to um, find out upper control limit and lower control limit and apply this formula into, um, into your upper control limit and lower control limits. And that's what I did for X bar, X double bar chart. I have upper control limit as 7.5 and lower control limit 2.76. And for R chart, 5.1 and 0. Then you can draw uh, the X bar chart first. Right, so this one is 2.7, and that one is 7.5, and the center line is uh, X double bar 5.14, and then you plot the the time that it takes uh, for students to or the customers to wait, and it's this shape. So in the X bar chart, we see that. Um, you know, it's okay, it's uh, manageable, right? So it's none of the points are outside of the boundaries. So we see that uh, it's not that, it's pretty good process. That's that much we can say. However, when you look at the range chart, we find that uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, upper control limit and lower control limit as 5.14 and zero. And uh, we see that a lot of them are going beyond uh, what we saw, right? So at least this point is not um, not good, right? So something happened at 2 p.m. and it went uh, beyond the control. So what can we learn from this statistical process control chart? First, we can learn that X bars are increasing after 2 p.m right here at the 2 p.m. is increasing exceeding five minutes wait time so that's not a good thing second thing is both X bar and R chart are out of control at 2 p.m. third thing is what happened at 2 p.m. here right so we may go back to the data itself and see what happened and we see that uh, the range is out of control and the reason might be uh, because uh, step 4 its uh, um, wait time increased to 7.5, while step 3, its uh, uh, wait time decreased to 1.7. So it's good for step 3 to decrease the wait time to 1.7. It's a phenomenal. So it's a good thing. However, step 4, uh, it increased the, it's the wait time, so it's not good. So uh, we have to investigate and, and understand the situation. Once you calculate the process, you understand uh, how the process is like, then now you can try to calculate how capable the process is. And uh, process potential index is CP that can be calculated first. CP is defined as upper specification minus lower specification divided by six times sigma. And uh, a capable process must have a CP of at least 1.0 and uh, uh, 1.33 is used to allow for off-center process. It's pretty good. Uh, Six Sigma quality requires a CP being 2.0. So that's a very good uh, process. 
and he this table also provides you a good understanding of what the what CP means. CPK is prop, process capability index. It's defined as minimum of uh, either upper specification limit minus x bar over three times sigma, or x bar minus lower specification limit divided by three sigma. Whichever is lower, you choose that, and that's your process capability index. A capable process must have a CPK of at least 1.0. A capable process is not necessarily in the center of a specification, but it falls within the specification limit at both extremes. Here's how to interpret CPK. If CPK is negative, it's way skewed to the right. The ideal status has to be centered whether CPK is 1 or CPK is greater than 1, then it's perfectly centered and uh, within the limits. So that's the best scenario. If CPK is 0, that means the center line is at the right uh, specification. If CPK is between 0 and 1, it's skewed to the left uh, below the center line. That's what it means by that. So we can understand that whether this process is ca calibrated or not. In Rowan Bank example, uh, we need to calculate the sigma and then um, the upper specification and lower specification is from uh, UCL and uh, uh, um, lower SEL and we can apply that in this formula and we can find that CP is 0.56 and CPK is also 0.56. We see that um, we can compare them together. Uh, CP is 0.56, therefore it means that it is incapable process, right? And uh, uh, it cannot meet its goal effectively. CPK is 0.56, which means that uh, the process is shifted to the left from the center. The process needs to be recalibrated. That's how we can interpret Rowan Bank uh, process. Let's go over a few questions together. When the natural process limits exceed the specification range, which of the following courses of action may require customer approval? Um, so if there is too much gap, then what happens is that uh, we need to really talk with the customers and uh, uh, change the specification itself. It may be too uh, narrowly defined and need to be broadened, right? So the answer is A. Next question. The question assumes uh, six sigma and converts it to three sigma level. The reported CPK for a process with an average of 28, a spread of 10 units and upper and lower specification limits of 35 and 15 respectively would be. So this one um, you know, requires us to calculate CPK. So we know that uh, CPK formula is USL minus X bar over three sigma. So uh, if we put uh, uh, this formula into it, at six sigma level, the spread is 10, then at three sigma, it is five, Therefore, CPK will be 35 minus 28 over 5, and it gives us 1.4. Next question. The major difference between process capability indices and process performance indices. A, the specification spread must be known for process capability indices. It's not necessarily true. B, how the standard deviation term is determined for the two indices. Yes, that's correct. C, the target value must be known for process performance indices, not necessarily. D, the required failure rate <coughs> limit must be known for process capabilities, not necessarily. So the answer is B. Next question. The best way to determine process capability for non-normal data is by a, removing the non-normal data, B, using some form of data transformation, C, constructing a histogram and estimate the result, 
D, improving the process by making the data normal. The answer is transforming the data, B. Okay, so let's uh, wrap up the measure phase. Uh, process metrics and value stream map and process index were uh, covered in this phase. Process metrics, we saw time-based, cost-based, and outcome-based measures. Especially uh, talk time and cycle times were very important. In value stream map, we, we need to add value to the process map and apply team new wood to determine whether it is a value adding activities or non-value adding activities or uh, non-value adding activities, but necessary. Also, it serves as the guidance for the to be chart. The third topic was process index, and there we learned statistical process control chart and uh, CP and CPK.